Hello, or welcome to my morning notes and a happy 4th of July to any of our American viewers who have nothing better to do on the 4th of July than watch this video. Let's take a look at the situation for uh, the states because we obviously have, as this is the first week of the month, the very important non-farm payrolls coming up at the end of this week and that follows uh, a really quite shockingly bad ISM number earlier in the week, dropping below the dreaded 50 level when fif above 50 is generally held to show uh, expansion and below 50 is held to uh, show recession. Despite that, stocks have been remarkably stable uh, this year, certainly compared to the rest of the world. Uh, and American stocks seem to have enjoyed uh, as much of a, a relief rally as others after the EU summit last week. What exactly is going on? With me now to discuss this from New York is our US markets editor, Mike McKenzie. Mike, thanks for, thanks for joining us. How, surpri how surprised were you by the uh, ISM number earlier this week? And how, what, what drove it and how meaningful do you think it is? Well, I think it is meaningful. It's the first clear evidence that the global economy is slowing down and it's starting to affect what has been one of the few pockets of success here in the US, their manufacturing sector. Hmm. We've had a very cheap dollar for the last few years and manufacturing has been a, a relative oasis of calm here. And what you, if you look dig, if you deep in, dig into the ISM data, you can see that export orders fell to off and also inventories are rising. So it's a cause for concern. It sort of puts, a, it's a, really an arrow across the, the bow of those who believe that the US can decouple and remain immune to a slower global economy. And indeed, if you take a look at the ISMs from various other countries, which are all nicely comparable because they're all on the same scale, it was remarkable how the US managed to keep growing while the Eurozone and China were, were heading downwards, wasn't it? Yes, it is. And I think that's a reflection because the dollar's been generally weaker. I mean, one of the great mysteries, I suppose, for some people is that the Eurozone crisis hasn't really hurt the currency. It's been more of a bond story. So that's helped the US benefit. We've had this very unusual situation, which we can illustrate with a, the graphic here, that uh, both stocks and bonds in the U.S. have been doing very well of late. Uh, we've seen this great rebound in stocks, and yet, uh, which implies that risks are going down, and yet uh, Treasuries are really don't seem to be uh, don't seem to be affected. One of these markets has to be wrong, don't they? Uh, that would certainly appear to be the case, and it's what a lot of investors are worried about. Um, you talk to investors here, and this, it, this is the big question. We had a great performance for Treasuries during the second quarter as stocks took a really hard hit back in May into June. And then sort of equities rallied quite well, particularly last week at the end of the month. But what's always been interesting about that equity rally, mm. even if you go back to the first quarter this year, is that bond yields simply aren't selling off aggressively. There's a real... Uh, uh, sort of feeling here that that the US economy is going to slow down and that bond yields are going to continue to grind lower. Now obviously for stocks their get out of get out of jail card really is QE3. There's a feeling here that no matter if and no matter how bad the data gets it actually increases the chances for QE3 and as we saw with QE1 and 2 that has been good for stocks. So we're almost at the point where, where bad news is good news. I mean, we've seen a big rebound in gold and oil this week as well. I mean, are, are people yes. s simply taking a look at a bad ISM number and saying, OK, that means we get more cheap money from the Fed? I mean, you just have to look at the gold price. As whenever you think QE3 is back on the table, gold leads the rally. And I mean, really, what it is is the Bernanke put. And everybody's betting on that for the stock market. That's why I think 1300 is the floor for the S&P. Would a bad payrolls number on Friday actually perversely help? Would it give people the, the sense that the Fed had more cover to, uh, to, to go to QE3? I think it would because, I mean, effectively, if we get 90,000 payrolls, which is the forecast for the moment, mm. and unemployment stays steady at 8.2%, that's really untenable for a Fed that has the dual mandate. Um, it also, 90,000 payroll growth, would show that it's been a sharp reduction in second quarter job gains versus that of the first quarter. Now the Fed has consistently argued that part of the whole rationale for doing quantitative easing is to push people into riskier assets. They want to see stock prices higher, they want to see housing prices start to move up, so I, I think it would give them the cover to go forth and do QE3. Great, thank you very much Mike. I think the good news this 4th of July is fairly plain. The markets have set it up so that all we can have on Friday is good news. 
Either there will actually be a decent unemployment report, which everybody will be happy about, or there will be a bad one, in which case that will also be an excuse to buy stocks because it will mean there could be more cheap money coming from the Fed. And a happy 4th of July to all.